Hi, this is a TEL 410 introduction to Jim Cummins, Bix, and Kelp. This is one part of a series of videos that supports language teaching and learning. Here, we will introduce Cummins in a simple way that meets the needs of this course. Jim Cummins is a professor of language and literacy development at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. His research has laid the foundation for the understanding that language is a part of cognitive development, not behavior. He is a strong advocate for bilingual and L2 learning as it improves the classroom environment. In 1979, Jim Cummins coined the acronyms FIX and CALP. These refer to processes that help teachers to understand a student's language fluency. But what is BIX and CALP? BIX is a person's basic interpersonal communicative skills. This is a measure of conversational fluency or social language. These communication skills are ones that are developed through everyday interactions with language, such as speaking with a friend, on the phone, or even sending a text. CALP stands for Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, better known as Academic Language. This is language that uses vocabulary for a specific field of interest and is usually used in the classroom or workplace. This is a commonly known graph for Bix and Kalp that helps to show the level of cognitive demands versus how abstract or concrete the language activity is. This graph is split into four quadrants. Quadrant A includes concrete and cognitively undemanding language activities such as a face-to-face -face introduction, conversation, or a video call. Quadrant B is concrete and cognitively demanding. This includes activities such as a job interview or a class presentation. Quadrant C includes abstract and cognitively undemanding activities, such as a diary entry, a phone call, or a text message. Quadrant D is abstract yet cognitively demanding. This quadrant can include activities such as a standardized exam or a research paper. While the Bix and Kalp dichotomy explains and advocates for bilingualism, when it comes to understanding language for pedagogical purposes, this dichotomy does not work out so well. In fact, it is actually problematic. Let's look at some English language learners in the classroom as an example. Some EL students have a highly developed Bix. This means that they seem to be fluent while speaking casually with their peers and teacher. However, when given an exam, a student may not perform well due to an underdeveloped CALP. Since each situation presents differing cognitive demands, and diverse students come with differing background relationships with English, Bix and CALP is not a one-size-fits-all theory. The quadrant lines can actually become blurred or change completely depending on the situation. For example, it is very possible for a high school student in an AP Spanish class to pass the AP exam with flying colors, since what they were tested on may not have been cognitively demanding for them. However, when the student actually visits a Spanish-speaking country, conversing with a native Spanish speaker may be amazingly demanding. As educators, we need to make sure that we are aware of our students' language abilities. Just because they are speaking fluently with their peers, it doesn't mean they don't need further language support. Being socially fluent is not the same as being able to use the language at the same academic level as their native English peers. Because academic language can be very specialized, it takes between five and seven years to develop on par with native English speakers. This means that a student who begins learning English in the second grade may not have a highly developed CALP until they reach high school. In contrast, social language usually takes between six months to two years to develop into fluency. Some ideas for helping EL students in your lessons are giving them a list of definitions or translations before your lesson so they can become more familiar with the lesson vocabulary, using images and drama during your lessons to provide multiple modalities for learning, and connecting the lesson to your EL's cultural background. However, you should avoid relying solely on best practices and strategies and instead build new understandings and learning paths between your student's first and second language. This is often termed as translanguaging, which we will discuss later in another video. You should get to know your students personally and individually along with their backgrounds and language needs so that you can know how best to help them. This moves us beyond the simple quadrants of the Bix and Kalp dichotomy. 
Cummins is a great advocate for ELs and bilingualism. Since we still have many practices today that systematically lower the chances of our EL students graduating from high school or attending college. His theory gives educators another look at their students' development, which helps students experience success in the classroom. That's all for now. Be sure to check out our other theory videos to learn more. See you next time. Created using Powtoon.